In this video, we'll balance the equation for this double displacement reaction. We have Ca3PO42, that's calcium phosphate, and then we have sulfuric acid, H2SO4. We're going to use a bit of a trick to make this a lot easier, and you can use this on most double displacement reactions. Let's count the atoms up. Three calcium atoms, and here's the trick. We have the phosphate ion here, and we have it again here. So we can just count it as one thing. So we have two times the one phosphate, just two phosphate ions. We have two hydrogens here, and again, the sulfate, SO4 here, and we have another sulfate here. We're just gonna count that as one thing. So we have the one sulfate ion. So you can see this is a lot neater to work with. Product side, we have one calcium, one phosphate, three hydrogens, and then just one sulfate. Let's start balancing the phosphates. We can put a two in front of the phosphoric acid. So one times two. So the phosphates are balanced. And that's also nice because this two applies to everything. So we have three times two. That gives us six and that's an even number. So that'll make it easier to balance the hydrogens. Why don't we put a three in front of the calcium sulfate? One times three. That'll give us three calciums. Those are balanced. Then the sulfates, we have the whole sulfate here, one times three, that gives us three sulfates. Okay, well, if we put a three in front of the sulfuric acid, the one sulfate times the three, those are balanced. And then two times three for the hydrogen is six. And we're done, this equation is balanced. So it looks like a pretty intimidating equation to balance when you start out. But if you think of the polyatomic ions, like the phosphate ion here, we have it again here, we can just count it as one thing. Same for the sulfate. We have the sulfate here and here. We can just count that as one thing. Then when we do the balancing, it's a lot easier. You get the same answer either way. This is just quicker in time. It matters on exams. If we wanted to write the states, everything would be aqueous, except the calcium sulfate. Calcium sulfate that would be insoluble. So that would fall to the bottom of the test tube as a precipitate. Maybe a little bit would dissolve, but most of it would be a solid and that would be our precipitate. This is Dr. B with the balanced equation for calcium phosphate plus sulfuric acid. Thanks for watching.